So if I can have them start moving forward here. We have Vern Nazareno, uh, whose topic will be nutrition. Cynthia Aguirre, who will be talking about building confidence. Jennifer Reyes, a uh, topic is I will. And Dr. Jacob, um, which is mental health. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bernadette Nazarino, and I'd like to ask, by raise of hand, in the last 24 hours, who looked in the mirror, and the first thing they saw was, what can I improve, right? Should I do it? I get out of the shower, I walk to my mirror, and the I Anyway, so now just a little bit. By raise of hand, who does that? Who's done it in the last 24 hours? And that is, I think, you know, as women, I think we find ourselves always looking for what can we improve and what could I do better, what can I fix, you know, what can I make prettier. And I think, you know, it's women's wellness excellent. And um, wellness or healthy is a state of mind, body, and spirit. I'll talk a little bit about nutrition, but the one thing I'd like to emphasize on is, you know, just be happy with what you have. It does take a little bit of time. And, you know, just looking in the mirror, instead of what can I fix, look for what looks really good. Because I do that too. Walk out of the shower, look, hey, my weight, you know. So look at the positive more than the negative. And, you know, um, when you do look at things with a positive view, you do live a more positive life. But the one thing as women, you know, what is what is detrimental to us is what can we fix, right? And we always find that we give so much of ourselves that we kind of forget. And I do. I spend a lot of time reaching out to the corporate world, and I do talk about nutrition. And I talk about how to live healthy. And I want to say 99% of the time when I ask people, um, you know, what do you think is healthy? Um, majority of the people feel like if I don't eat, I will lose weight. 99% of the time, if I don't eat, I will lose weight. But the one thing about that is it does the most adverse effect. So a little bit about if I don't eat, I will lose weight. Actually, if you don't eat, you will gain weight because you're starving your body. So when you starve your body, your body thinks, okay, I'm not gonna eat, and so whatever I get, I'm going to hold on to. And so your body actually holds on to fat cells because it thinks you're starving yourself. And so I, the one really good thing is that we have a great partnership with Kristen and Kayla, and during the break, go by and visit them. They'll be able to help give you um, a free meal plan and really talk to you about the healthy way of doing you know, weight loss because you should actually be eating more, but more of the right things. And so with that, um, I'd like to say one positive self, you know, and make sure that, you know, the one thing about a being healthy you is nourishing yourself, nourishing yourself with enough food to eat. Um, typically you should be eating every two and a half to three hours. Uh, which is about six meals a day, so you can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then in, in the in-between, a snack. And choose healthy choices. And so, I actually want to segue this into the beautiful Cynthia. Thank you. Again, my name is Cynthia, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about where my journey went through, um, from where I started to where I am now. Basically, it started when I was about 35 years old. I had given birth to my third and fourth child, twins. And by all aspects, if anybody looked at me, they probably would have thought I had the perfect life. I had four beautiful, healthy children, a loving husband. I lived in an amazing neighborhood and a beautiful home, and I had a very comfortable lifestyle. But aside from all this, I was extremely, extremely depressed. I was very sad, very down. I would, and then I would feel guilty about that. I felt how can I feel so bad about this perfect life that I have? And then I, I, I would actually look at myself in the mirror and hate what I saw. 
I hated the way I looked. I hated the way I felt in my own skin. I was overweight, out of shape, extremely unhealthy. And then I would try to think, well, I need to make a change in my life. What can I do? But then I came up with every excuse that I can think of. I don't have time. I'm too old. My body's too worn out from years of neglect. I have children. And then, like we talked about, women are often seen as caretakers. We're expected to be the caretaker. We're expected to take care of loved ones, husbands, family members, children, uh, sick relatives. We're always expected to do this, that it's often seen as selfish if we decide to take care of ourselves. So then I started feeling, oh, I don't want to be selfish. I have kids. I made this choice. I can't do anything about what I am about myself. I have to just live with it. But then one day I woke up and decided, I can't keep doing this, not only for myself, but my kids. I couldn't allow my children to continue to see mom sad and hating herself and hating the way I looked. I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to go anywhere. So then I finally woke up one morning and I literally forced myself to walk to a mirror, which again, I dreaded mirrors. So it was very difficult for me to do. But I walked up to that mirror and I looked at myself long and hard and I said, I'm no longer going to put myself down. I'm no longer going to look at the negatives and put myself, say what I hate about myself. Instead, I'm going to wake up every morning and I'm going to tell myself one thing, one thing that I love about myself, one thing that I think is nice or pretty or whatever, but I had to be positive. And I was going to do this every day. As hard as it was to do it, I did it. The next thing I did was I decided I needed to have healthy snacks and meals at all times in my home. Because again, as women, I know there would be times I would get home six, seven o'clock at night and realize, what did I even eat today? Did I even eat? And as Vern said, that actually makes you gain weight and I was, it makes you more healthy. And or we get, give our kids something to eat and what do we do? We eat the leftovers off their plates. Or we grab whatever's easy to grab to get, just to eat something. And that's the worst thing we can do. So I started making sure there was always meals prepped, healthy meals, healthy snacks, so that I was able to get to the meal. And then I also realized, as we talked about, working out is very difficult to do when trying to fit in the time. And I realized, okay, I need to start going to the gym. But I don't have an hour. I don't have two hours time to go to the gym to get on a treadmill. So what, what can I do? I was going to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes out of my day, even if that meant while my kids were napping, I was going to throw in a DVD and do whatever I could do. Or while I'm cooking dinner, I would stop and do squats or push-ups or something just to do something so that I was moving. And it's amazing how once you start throwing in 10, 15 minutes, how all of a sudden you're able to fit in a regular schedule of working out once a day or once a week or twice a week, whatever it is, it's still something. And you need to appreciate that you're able to do that. And then I, it was funny because I realized all of a sudden just doing these little things, all of a sudden I started feeling just more confident, happier. And then I realized how much happier my children, my husband, my marriage improved, people around me. And I just became a better person overall, more energy. And then all of a sudden I just started being able to fit in more prepping meals, going to the gym, enjoying life more. And that made my family enjoy life more. And I think now my goal really is to get everybody to understand, women and men, that it's okay to, to love yourself. It's okay to appreciate yourself. And it's not about being selfish. It's about being caring about yourself enough to be able to care for other people. Because again, we are the caregivers, so we need to take care of ourselves. And as we talked about being on a plane, we need to, to take care of ourselves before we can take care of everybody else. So and with that, I want to segue into Jennifer um, talking about new beginnings. And that's where I want to say that we're able to start. Anytime you're willing to make that change, you're able to make the change. Thank you. and it, it kind of really makes sense with what I want to talk to you guys about. A lot of what we do as women is focus on everything that's negative about us. First thing we did, we walked, we walked in the mirror and we said, what don't I like, right? And it started off with looking in that mirror and saying, there's so much I want to change. Well, I'm here standing here in front of you telling you how you can take that negativity and turn it into success and happiness. Sound good? Yes. Okay, I'm going to ask you all to participate with me. If everybody can close their eyes. Don't fall asleep on me, though. <laughs> Close your eyes and imagine, if you will, a gift. Now, this gift, it's not big in size, but it is immensely powerful. It didn't cost me a lot of money, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you wholeheartedly. But its value, its value is priceless. 
Now, the impact that this gift is going to have on you, it's like the councilwoman said, it's going to help you conquer the world. Now, open your eyes. Do you guys want this gift? Bear with me for a couple more minutes, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to tell you my story before, though. So I am a director at the biggest insurance brokerage in the entire world. And in addition to that, I have immense success partnership with my also immensely successful partner. We've developed a real estate investment firm where we believe in inspiring new beginnings. That's what we're all about, taking what is and making it better. Now, I didn't just fall from the sky with all the know-how or the cojones to make it work, right? It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of tears. I am a woman after all, right? Well, I started out as a timid young girl with big dreams and big goals, kind of, kind of head in the clouds, right? I came out there and I wanted to make my mark. I wanted to leave a legacy. But I realized that after years and years of struggling to get to the top, I was slapped in the face so many times with camps, right? I'm a director at the world's largest insurance brokerage. And I got, you can't be a director. That's a man's job, right? And you want to take on another project? You got too much to do at home. And my favorite, oh, you want to run a business? You can't do that, you're just a woman. Excuse me? I don't think so. How many of us have been hit with those camps in the past? And how many of us let them knock us down? Well, I'm gonna tell you today, all that self-hate, all that negativity, all of these camps, you can use that to fuel you to immense success and happiness. So I took those camps and I decided, you tell me I can't, I'm gonna show you that I will. So guess what? I've been a director there for five years. I'm successful. You tell me I can't take on that project? I took on five. You tell me I won't be a successful business owner? I'm standing here in front of you with a very successful real estate business, right? Now, it took a long time. I didn't just fall from the sky with the know-how. I fell many, many times. And during that process, someone came to me and said, Chen, you're a woman. You can't be a successful entrepreneur. No, not at all. You make too many emotional investments and you make too many decisions with your heart. That's not good business. Leave it to the boys. Ouch, right? That's the biggest slap in the face you can get. But guess what? I'm five feet tall, but I am a powerhouse. I have something inside of me and that guy didn't know it. I had that gift that I promised that I was gonna give it to you guys. And I would. So what I did is I took that slap in the face, I got with my girl, and we started a business. So I'd like to introduce you guys to Alinea Lux. We are a woman-led business with a focus on doing the right thing, because we believe that doing the right thing is just good business, right? Doing the right thing to me is making that emotional investment, and it's okay. Just because I'm a woman doesn't make that bad. Doing the right thing means making decisions from my heart, because guess what? it leads to a win-win situation, and I'm totally okay with that. Do you guys agree with me there? Yes. All right, I'm gonna ask you guys to take your hands out, palms up, hold them out just in front of you like that, because I'm ready to give you this gift. Now, before I give you this gift, I need you guys to make me a promise. You guys okay with that? I, guys, I need you guys to promise me that any time you are hit with a can't, I want you to throw them a will. They tell you you can't, you show them that you will. So on behalf of Alinea Lux, what I'd like to give to you is the gift of a new beginning, a new train of thought. That is what Alinea means. So from here on out, you guys are no longer gonna live a life of camp. You're gonna live a life of will. And when you see how powerful this gift is, this change of thought, this different train of thought, you're gonna look back on today, on your new beginning, and you're gonna smile. Or you can do what I did, because it felt so good. I went up to that guy and I said, you, you told me I can't. I'm standing right here and show you that I did. And then I did the whole, in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. only what 45 minutes or less that we started to talk and already talk about 
exercise, we talk about uh, uh, diet, we talk about uh, aging, uh, mental health, and you know, I'm the lucky one who's going to talk about the mental health and how we are struggling with the uh, debt issue nowadays. Um, I'm a psychiatrist in Jindra. I've been in the area since 88, and I'm proud to be the medical director in uh, the Jindra Community Hospital, which we have a geriatric psychiatric program, and it's the only one in the area here that I started in 1991 and has been very successful in the Jindra area. I'll talk about the mental health and I'll talk about the stress that we have in our life. Between Denise, we should talk about her kids and about cooking, plus making up in the morning, her makeup and taking care of her home and her activities. And between our shape, our weight and our look in the mirror and between how we handle all those stresses. And when we think about physicians and we used to think everything is medicine. Everything is pills. And that's how we came today to the problem with addiction and the problem with having a lot of people get hooked to what we, the media now was talking about it, it's opiate dependence. And uh, how people get hooked to all those opiates starting from uh, dentists that have good extraction and I got my uh, painful teeth after that and then I got uh, whether kind of opiates, Tylenol number three, or uh, uh, codeine, uh, Norcos, and then I can't stop using it, and the doctor just keep giving it to me, and that makes me addicted to the uh, to the these pain medications. So what we really now, as a doctor, think about is other alternatives other than just a pill to give it to the patients, the preventive medicine the healthy life that all my colleagues here talk about it today, as well as Denise. And that's how we can get into a, a better life and exercise, healthy diet, that is really the treatment for the uh, everybody here. Uh, what I tell my patients is half hour active brisk walking a day that will do the uh, uh, trick for any kind of illness all kind of stresses, whether it is home stresses, work stresses, relationship stresses, exercise that will keep you healthy. Uh, aging, and Denise mentioned about the 100 plus uh, people that are living nowadays, and we see more and more of those nowadays with the advancement of between medicine and healthy life. So we're gonna have more people having Alzheimer and dementia and disease. And uh, Denise mentioned the Gary Small, who is a professor in UCLA and is actually a friend of mine. I recommend that you can read his book. He has a book called Memory Bible. Memory Bible. It's a very good book for people who has uh, uh, a relative has dementia. And this Bible have, uh, has, uh, or the book has a lot of exercises that we can do in order to help our memory to keep going on. Our memory is uh, like anything else, if you don't use it, you will lose it. So it's good to have the uh, exercises that in the book and they can do it all the time that will be helpful. Not tablet, not medicine that will help your memory, but it's keep it going and keep it working. Uh, that's how we can get rid of any kind of dementia or prevent dementia at least from happening. Uh, well, uh, we will be having a panel now to answer any questions. So, uh, if anybody have questions, to uh, forward it to any of the four of us to answer. Thank you. <laughs> Memory Bible. Memory Bible by Gary Small. S M A L L. It's available. In, it's about twenty-five dollars a book, and really, it's a very good book for anybody who has. Uh, issues regarding uh, dementia. Uh, if you like, I would like to help you with that too at any time. Do you have any other questions for any of the panelists? <coughs> um, so I'm trying to help my mom sort of eat better because she doesn't eat at all. And she always tells me, like, oh, I'm not hungry. I'm not 
long enough to eat. And I'm trying to like put together a snack for her that would be healthy, but at the same time, when you go to the market, you see everything that's low fat, sugar free, this, that. What do you trust, or how do you, how do you have the knowledge to know that what you're getting is healthy or good for them? I would recommend anything that grew on earth. Um, visit the vegetable and fruit section. Um, but before that also too, um, I typically ask people when they you know, seek help in nutrition is what do you like to eat? Because um, we have our own perception of what they should be eating, but if they don't like it, they're not going to eat it. So ask her first, you know, what are your favorite foods? And then surprise her with the things that she likes. And maybe that will help, you know, get the ball rolling for her to eat. Um, is she more a vegetable or a fruit person? Or fruit. She's fruit? Okay. Yeah, she's a fruit lady. Aww. <laughs> um, I, you know, I saw on Facebook a, a, a video of this guy who had a mango put on a stick and then cut it and then made it look like a flower. Sometimes, too, for me, I feel like people are uh, appealed by food in three ways. Taste, texture, and appearance. And if she always says that she's not hungry, maybe if you change the appearance of something to make it look pretty, because I am, I'm really good at making it. <laughs> I make things look pretty. And when people see it and it's appealing to them, they'll want to eat it. And that's just our playing in our brain is, you know, kind of tap into what appeals to her, you know, and the taste and the texture. Um, but you ask her first, um, what does she like to eat? Because if we go to the grocery store and we pick out what we want for her to eat and we give it to her, um, if she doesn't like to, then we eat it. But the one thing is to ask her. Thank you. the 
black meat and the white meat. Yeah. Now we have the seedless watermelons, and we also have just watermelons. And they have the white seeds. Sometimes they have a few black seeds. Mm -hmm. So how do you know? You don't know what, sometimes they'll say, you know, many watermelons are seedless. But then the other watermelons, they just say watermelon, you get home, you pop it open, and it's got white seeds, no black seeds. Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs>